There's a lot of people who think that we need to replace plastic with more plastic or that somehow we can recycle ourselves out of the plastic problem. Unfortunately, both from an emissions energy perspective, from a unit economic logistics perspective, it seems highly unlikely as humanity thinks about how to replace plastic with more plastic that we have many solutions. In fact, what I would argue strongly is that humanity needs to embrace what nature does. Nature makes materials from nutrients. My name is Dr. Luke Haberhals. I'm excited to share with you what a company I founded called Natural Fiber Welding is doing to disrupt the plastic industry with plants. Plastics is a, is a global problem, both because of where plastics come from and the kinds of resources that go into plastics and where plastics go to. Uh, from cradle to grave, there are impacts that are quite large. So for example, the extraction of petrochemicals or the, the precursors to petrochemicals to make plastics comes and puts the earth uh, and wildlife at great peril. We can simply note that, again, whether you're talking about polyurethane as a vegan leather material and its impact on, on things like birds versus just look at this uh, satellite image of oil spilled in the Gulf of Mexico. There's massive, massive issues and impacts in terms of where we get the materials that go into plastics. Of course, once plastics are made and you've done all of those emissions, then there's still the fact that plastics are not natural. They aren't a nutrient for the environment. So when they go off into the world, either on purpose or accidentally, then those impacts are real. So uh, in some cases, there's waste management issues with plastics, with the, the pop bottles and the things that are macroscopic that we see. Of course, many people are now coming to recognize that when you wash your clothing, even when you wear your clothing, when clothing is made from plastics like polyester, it has a great impact on the base of the food chain uh, and your quality of life. The reason why we need a plastic-free world is because humanity will never recycle its way out of the plastic problem. Let me say that again. Plastics will never be circular enough. The story that consumers have been told is that plastics can turn into consumer products and consumer products can be recycled to make new plastics. Unfortunately, this isn't really the case. Let's note again that plastics come from fossil resources and that the emissions profile both of producing virgin plastics and recycling plastics is extremely large. There is an incremental solution that some people are working on, which is to replace the fossil resources with biomass. However, unit economics, emissions, and lack of biodegradability remains a problem with this approach. Of course, plastics are very uh, good at turning into consumer products. When we think about those consumer products, however, how much of them actually get recycled is, is a completely different thing in terms of reality versus the stories we're told. What really happens is that due to lack of good unit economics, lack of investment, and lack of really appreciation for the fully burdened cost of plastic, we don't do any recycling outside of pop bottles and milk jugs. What ends up happening with the plastics that we have in our consumer products is that it's landfilled, burned, and more and more what we're recognizing in the textile industry is that both in the washing and the wearing of textiles, microplastic pollution is entering the environment, our homes, our watersheds, and polluting the planet we share. Plastics is a design fail. The only thing I would argue that humans can do instead of using plastic is plants. There are many people who think that we just need to start over. We need to grow some new material. In fact, what I would argue strongly is the materials to replace plastics are already abundant and are all around us. In order to understand how abundant plants are, you need to understand the scope of plastics. And let's start with the textile industry, for example. So this circle for polyester represents 100 billion pounds of polyester produced per year for the textile industry. These circles represent the natural materials that go into the textile industry. So that green circle for cotton is 55 billion pounds of cotton produced per year. We can contrast that against what nature can produce and what humans can cultivate through agriculture. So this dotted circle at the bottom, you can't see it all, but that is the production just of cellulose on planet Earth per year. 
This circle is 1% the size of the larger circle. The yellow circle is the amount of grain that's grown by agriculture each year. As you can see, humans can grow plenty of food and have plenty of materials for textiles if we find a different way to manufacture with all of that abundance that nature can provide. In fact, for those people who are concerned about food production, we can also just simply say there's already abundance of waste sitting in our closets. This circle represents the amount of waste cotton that's sitting in closets right now that's waiting to be recycled, except that technology never existed to really do it before. What natural fiber welding has invented and brought to market, is bringing to market, is an ability to recycle cotton waste and the most abundant plant matter that nature can provide into the high performance materials that we use in our everyday lives. The problem has never been that people need to grow brand new kinds of materials or synthesize new kinds of materials in the lab. In fact, there's plenty of abundance in nature and there's plenty of materials that are already high performance in nature and what humans really need to do is effectively mold and shape those materials in the same ways that we mold and shape plastic. All the materials you see here are produced from nutrients. That is to say, there's no petrochemicals, there's no glues, there's no plastics. What you see are textiles, leather-like materials, packaging, rigid composites, foams. All these materials, again, produced with natural fiber welding platforms that use natural inputs to make plastic-free outputs. Here's some examples of, of things we're doing in the real world. So this car door panel for a Porsche Taken is made with Miram. The world is coming to know Miram as a leather-like material, and even more important than a leather-like material, it is actually a plastic substitute. Today, most people don't recognize that the world's single largest use case for plastic leather-like materials is automotive interiors. Miram is showing the world that we can have a plants, not plastic approach to building automobiles that perform and that de deliver an experience to the, to the driver that they couldn't have before with the lowest possible impact. With Ralph Lauren, natural fiber welding is commercializing a new kind of uncompromising performance fabrics we call Claris. Claris is a technology that takes waste cotton, for example, and molds it and shapes it into geometries that only plastics could take on before. What this means is, quick drying, abrasion resistant, durable fabrics that come from cotton and even waste cotton. What this means is consumers can now have something comfortable, something of slow fashion, of quality that can last and last while performing in ways that only plastics could perform before. Natural fiber welding is working with Ralph Lauren and Porsche and other partners, global partners, who believe that the world needs to be plastic free. We hope that you'll join us as we convert nutrients and the most abundant natural things into the materials that perform for you and allow you to live better, again, with plants, not plastic. More new tonnage of plant matter will grow today on Earth than all of the synthetic things produced by people in the next year. Natural fiber welding is taking those abundant natural plant materials and churning them into all of those things that give you a high quality standard of living. One of the key insights of, of NFW was that we didn't just have cool science, we had a solution to major, major world global sort of problems and issues. So this whole overuse of plastics, the whole idea that uh, the world is overly dependent on fossil resources, that problem, there, there's any number of, of ways to think about solving that problem, but solving it with the scalable solutions, the solutions that can cost effectively be deployed to billions of people is sort of what drove this company to be what it is today. I would argue strongly that nature is the original circular sort of uh, invention. What we're doing is sort of adding a little piece to that, which is not only the ability to, to mold and shape, but also the ability to churn natural things back into new natural things that you can reuse in other ways as a second, third, fourth, et cetera, life.
What we have in front of us is the ability to solve problems and, and create a, a positive set of solutions that allows our children to have more with less.